Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel and today is actually really really late on Saturday evening it's actually 10 past 11 here in the UK on Saturday p.m um, and I said last Sunday that I would consider doing a weekly Sunday news roundup of Royal Stories and one has broke pre-Sunday ready for Sunday and that is that the lady who uh, Prince Harry wrote about in his memoir Spare as the older woman taking his virginity has actually come forward and revealed herself. Now, we don't know truly why she has taken this opportunity to reveal herself, um, but she has. And I think there's a whole article on it. What I'm going to do is start reading it and then we will kind of delve into it and dissect it and kind of break it down. Uh, also thrown into the mix, we have claims from a few days ago that Rupert Everett made that he knows who that person is and that it happened um, in Africa. So we'll be talking about all of that and what it all kind of means. But anyway, the headline reads, this is breaking news, I'm the older woman who took Prince Harry's virginity. Uh, she's now a digger driver known as Sasha Walpole, age 40. Now, many names have been mooted and put out there. Many, um, because Harry described her as being an older woman, many people were thinking maybe 25, 30 plus even. Uh, we've also had lots of women come forward uh, denying that they were the lady who Harry lost his virginity to. Uh, but it turns out that it's digger driver Sasha Walpole, who is now... 40, but I think she's actually two years older than Harry. Um, so she reveals that she is the mystery horse lover who had passionate five-minute sex session with the Duke in a pub field after a rendezvous was laid bare in Harry's memoir spare. So it was a passionate, tipsy, and very probably ill-advised encounter between two friends, of course they were friends, uh, who snuck out of a public house, uh, in the UK we call them pubs, for a crafty uh, Marlboro light, that's a cigarette, uh, and ended up clambering over a fence to make love in a field, shielded from sight by a dense summer hedgerow. Now, previously speculated was a different pub, so if you've seen photographs of a pub, <laughs> then this that wasn't the one. So uh, going forwards, I will show a picture of the correct pub and the correct field. Uh, this is how Prince Harry lost his virginity in July of 2001, an escapade the world would have remained ignorant about had he not revealed some of the intimate details in his explosive memoir spare. Now, of course, again, uh, you know, it is his life story to be able to tell as, as he recalls it. Um, but why he chose to reveal that is still a mystery. I mean, it seems like it wasn't anything that was particularly special to him. Um, and of course, it implicates other people, i.e. Um, Miss Walpole. The story, although he didn't name her in person, the story became one of the most talked about passages in the bestseller, amongst others. I mean, my goodness, there were so many. Uh, triggering a global guessing game as to who the unnamed older woman who treated him not unlike a young stallion, as he claims, might actually be. Now, that woman has come forward to share her version of what the Duke of Sussex memorably called an inglorious episode. She is Sasha Walpole, age 40 currently, who had known the prince since her days as a groom at the future King Charles Gloucestershire estate Highgrove. So she is not of noble birth, she is not a highborn woman, she is a regular um, civilian citizen who actually went to work as a groom. So that is obviously how they met and must have became friends because she would not have moved otherwise in Prince Harry's circle. At just over two years of Prince's senior, so she wasn't that much old. I mean, I suppose, you know, it turns out Harry may have been more 16 than 17. So two years older at that age may have seemed like an old woman, but in reality, she wasn't really um, that much old older. So at just over two years of Prince's senior, she is much younger than most of the women whose names were suggested in a frenzy of speculation about her identity. Well, that is true and correct. Um, today, she reveals it was Harry who made the first move, leading to their spontaneous and sparky sexual rendezvous in a field behind the Vine Tree pub 
in Wiltshire village of Norton, and in a touch of farce that his bodyguard was out hunting for him in a borrowed Ford Fiesta at the time. So it seems like Harry had actually broke away from his police protection and the police protection didn't know where he was. I mean, that actually indicates a little bit of a breach of security, maybe. But anyway, Sasha, now a mother of two, who drives diggers for a living, that's a bit of a change of scenery um, from from horses and being a groom, uh, had invited Harry, then 16-year-old Eton schoolboy, not 17, as suggested in spare, to the pub to celebrate her 19th birthday. The pair were such close friends that Harry had brought her a stuffed Miss Piggy and a comedy birthday card with a joke about a flatulent whale on the front. He added to that with a tray of ten shots and five of them each, which saw the pair very drunk by closing time, so alcohol was most definitely involved. At last orders, as last orders were called, the young prince asked her, should we go for a smoke? and then crept into an adjacent field to have a cigarette out of sight of his security detail. He started to kiss me, she remembers. It was passionate, intense. We both knew it went from a kiss onto the floor pretty quickly. Um, It sounds like a Mills and Boone (laughs) novel or a Jilly Cooper, doesn't it? Um, It was instant, fiery, wham, bam, between two friends. It was sparky because we shouldn't have been doing it. He wasn't Prince Harry to me. This was Harry, my friend. And the situation had got a little bit out of control. It felt naughty. I suppose in the sense that it shouldn't be happening. We didn't set out to do it. It wasn't premeditated. And I didn't know he was a virgin. (laughs) There were no virgin vibes. He seemed to know what he was doing. It was quick, wild, exciting. We were both drunk. It wouldn't have happened if we weren't. (gasps) A scandal. Um, Sasha had been dressed for her birthday party in tight black jeans uh, from the high street store New Look. There you go, New Look getting a promotion with a matching black top and a patterned black belt slung low across her hips. As Harry took off her jeans, the belt came loose and she had to return to the field the next day to hunt for it. Ooh, imagine losing your belt, my goodness. Harry in a pink shirt, jeans, and boxer shorts. Excuse me. A pink shirt, jeans, and boxer shorts. Oh, they weren't the big baggy ones, were they? Oh, managed to stay mostly clothed. Well, there was a certain part that must have come off. My goodness. It's all scandalous. Uh, The lovers were cushioned by the ankle-length grass in the field and shielded from the view of drinkers in the pub's beer garden by a dense summer hedgerow. It was pitch dark around 11pm and warm. Well, I bet something was warm, my loves. In spare, Harry writes that it was a quick ride after after which he'd smacked my rump and sent me off to graze. Today, his, his description of it being inglorious makes Sasha laugh. She says, I don't mind him saying that because it, it isn't really very glorious, is it? We were drunk and having sex in a field. I mean, she seems very down to earth. She seems very grounded. She seems the, the sort of uh, woman that actually Harry probably should still be friends with now. Um, you know, perhaps if he surrounded himself with more of, you know, the sort of down to earth, grounded people. Anyway, um, and she clearly remembers giving Harry a one handed smack on the bottom as their five-minute sex session came to a hurried close. Um, It's his sense of humour. We were part of a massive horse scene, and the slap happened in a horsey context. The book is a funnier interpretation of that. His description is accurate. The real shock when I saw what he'd written was how true it was. Uh, That's what took me back most. I'm not offended. Afterwards, I did grab his bum and give him a slap. I gave him a little squeeze as well. He had a peachy bum. And I don't know about the stallion thing. I think that was more to do with the fact that I worked with horses. To tell the truth, he didn't make sure I was happy. He was young. It's not until you are older you understand that stuff. It really was just a moment of passion. The sound of their friends spilling out into the pub car park brought the pair swiftly back to reality and they panicked at the idea of being spotted together. They also realised that when Harry had failed to appear at closing time, his security detail would have gone in search of him. They, I mean, imagine finding, imagine being the security guard and going off and finding Harry in a field with his, with his, you know, his clothes off and his boxer shorts all afray. My goodness. 
Um, so they separated to return to the vine tree in the hope of keeping their encounter. Oh, the old classic of you know split and uh, <laughs> and pretend like you were coming back at different times. Uh, Sasha says afterwards there was the realization swear word that begins with S. Uh, what are we doing? Where do we go from here? I don't remember us kissing. It was just okay. We got up, put our clothes back on, and agreed we had to go in separate directions back to the pub, which, in hindsight, probably made it more obvious. Probably. <laughs> if we'd only gone for a cheeky cigarette, we would have returned together. We had only been gone about 15 minutes in total, but it was long enough for his security to start worrying. I went back. I mean, it just goes to show that there is a certain level of freedom, actually, because the security detail were there, they do normally keep, um, you know, when it's low key, when it's not a public event, they do keep a discreet distance. I mean, you know, it is usual for their charge to have to have a life, um, especially w w when they're young, I suppose. So perhaps that was a moment when they'd assess the situation, kind of come to the realization that it was probably safe, and that they could take a, take a bit of a step back, especially for him just going and having a cheeky cheeky cigarette, if no one knew that that's where he was and by no one i mean that the press hadn't got wind um or anything like that um i went back over the fence into the beer garden my friends saw me and started laughing i didn't have my belt on it's kind of obvious when you come back a bit disheveled from a field i should think it is my loves uh, my friend bryony had ended up her 1.1 liter Blue Fiesta. Oh, this is classic. This is just classic. <laughs> With one of the backup security guards on a Harry hunt. They found him down the road. He was hiding in a red telephone box. Um, he might have phoned his security from there. I don't know. The mobile signal wasn't always dependable. It still isn't. Well, if you're in the countryside, yes. Brian, he drove Sasha home to Gloucestershire. Um, and she woke with a hangover and a sense of awkwardness. I wasn't thinking I've had sex with Prince Harry. It was, oh God, I've just slept with Harry because of course they were friends. And, you know, if you've had those sorts of relations with a friend, it could be a little bit awkward, couldn't it? Uh, it's a bit cringy if you have slept with a friend. You've overstepped a line, broken the friend code. The next morning, Bryony took me back to get my belt and my car. We had a giggle about it. Bryony said, what the hell happened? And I said, hmm, I don't really know. Well, I, I, you probably should know. It was pretty easy to find the spot because my belt was there. No mention of protection. Anyway, just saying. Sadly, the encounter marked the end of Sasha's friendship with Harry. From being regular drinking partners, the pair never texted, spoke, or saw each other again. So that indicates that it probably was a little bit awkward for the two of them. And they kind of both probably mutually um, sort of drifted apart and kind of felt that that was the moment to kind of walk away um, and, and leave it. Although Sasha says that she was not hurt, she thinks that summer was the end of a chapter in both of their lives. She would soon start socialising in another area with a group of friends whose passion was motorsport and not horses and meet Ian, the man who would become her husband. Now she has a job excavating the footed, the footings for patios and driveways, a world away from the life Harry has in his Californian mansion, indeed. Um, she says, your friendship circles change and your circumstances change, absolutely. Um, Sasha says, there was a lot going on with Harry's life that I was not aware of. I never thought it would turn into a relationship. Uh, there'd been nothing before, so there wasn't going to be anything after. It was a pure drunken moment. We drifted apart, and I didn't mind, and I have no regrets. Do I wish I texted him? No, I don't think there was anything to be gained from that. Um, so there we go. I don't think there's anything else particularly, um, particularly in the article. Um, yeah, I suppose the main thing to talk about is why has she come forward now? Usually when people come forward with something that they've been very secret and private about for a long time, it's because the press found out. Now, this is a Daily Mail exclusive. So what I'm imagining is that the Daily Mail found out that they were going to do an expose and they probably offered her the chance to tell her own story in her own words rather than being exposed. Um, 
you know, is that a moral thing to do? You know, it is a private thing, but then Prince Harry is the one who sort of, you know, brought it to the attention. I'm not saying it's right uh, for the newspapers to go digging and, you know, exposing people. Um, that's not the right thing, but they do. And, you know, I suppose she would have had a right perhaps to uh, take legal action, but it's too late. Once uh, once the cat is out of the bag, um, they may not have given her much warning of this story coming out. I mean, this is what I'm assuming happened. Uh, but she says that she has no regret. She says, she says that she has no shame about it. It just sort of happened. Uh, she says that, you know, if if she met Harry in the street, she'd like to think they could go for a drink. Oh, by the way, I am in my in my robe. I forgot to tell you at the start, because it's so late at night, I'm in my I'm in my dressing gown, hence no jewels, no tiara, no anything. Um so yeah, I mean, did we need to know who it was? No. You know, th this uh, lady could have remained could have remained anonymous and you know, we wouldn't have, have really cared. Um, but obviously the press still wanted to know. These are loose ends in their eyes that I think they really wanted to kind of get to grips with and sort of put out there. And like I say, the press normally save their more juicier stories for a Sunday, which is why I am doing this now. I don't expect there to be any more sort of real juicy Sunday stories coming up. Uh, I will just check the headlines to see if anything else um, has come up. Um, I don't really think, oh yes, there was, there was actually one thing I did want to, uh, read, which was the text message exchange, uh, between Sasha and her friend. And this was literally just after the news kind of, well, all the excerpts were leaking from Harry's book. So this is a WhatsApp message between Sasha and her friend. So Sasha, uh, friend, sends her this message. Have you seen the Daily Mail? Lots of laughter, um, crying laughy face emoji. She says no. Uh, and then the friend says, there has been a few posts about this. It's in his book, apparently. Wrong pub. Laughy face. Uh, and then Sasha says, yeah, in the book, uh, you older woman, you. It's proper cringe. Uh, I can't believe he's put it in. Neither can I. It's been years. To be honest, he has put a lot that he shouldn't of. Um, so that's the opinion, obviously, of her. He's lost the plot, hasn't he? Doesn't look good. Can't wait to read about it now. Uh, think I will pass. Hopefully the media are too focused on the Taliban to worry about his virginity. And at the time, they were. Uh, that was the big kind of story of the day. It was how Harry had kind of exposed himself and made himself uh, a bit of a target um, to the Taliban, whereas before everything had, had died down from, from years ago, and he kind of reignited that attention on himself. Unwant well, no, I mean, I don't think Harry was meaning to go for that attention, unless, of course, it was to increase his security back in the UK. It could have been a ploy, who knows. Um, personally, I don't think he was thinking that deep. I just think he was being a little bit naive, in including that in the book. But anyway, um, the, the press were focused on that. But now, obviously, you know, most of the attention has died down from all the other different things that came out in the book. Um, attention was on the one kind of really missing loose end, which of course is who was the person who Harry lost his virginity to. Now, going back to Rupert Everett, Rupert Everett claims that he knows the person who Harry Lost his, lost his virginity too, and that that was actually in, um, in Africa. So what I'm assuming is that perhaps the person that Rupert Everett is referring to, and of course we don't know who that person is, perhaps she was under the illusion that she was the first. Um, because I imagine that Harry would remember, and certainly Sasha's account of what happened very much sounds like a first time experience for Harry, you know, very quick, kind of fumbly, you know, very random. It seems like, seems like that that would be the case, Harry being quite inexperienced. It all kind of ties in to her being the person that Harry lost his, his virginity to. What I'm imagining is perhaps the person in Africa, perhaps she thought that Harry 
it was Harry's first time with her, but it probably wasn't. It could have been a second time, could have been a third time. He still could have been quite inexperienced. So I'm not kind of discounting and discrediting exactly what Rupert Everett said. Um, perhaps he spoke to someone who genuinely believed that she was that person. Um, that could very well be it. Um, so there we go. That's kind of everything, I think, for today's main Sunday news. I don't think there'll be much coming out um, to do another video of on Sunday. We'll probably see Charles at Sandringham at church, so look out for the photos of who might be accompanying him. Will Princess Anne be there? I'm imagining if Anne's there, then, you know, she may be a regular fixture, a regular guest at Sandringham with Charles. So I'm hoping that we kind of see Anne again. I think that will kind of really show what I spoke about last time, um, that, you know, how high, how, how high regard that um, King Charles has for his sister Anne and how valuable she is and her duty and service, service is honoured behind closed doors, so to speak. So anyway, thank you for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, then please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media. And of course, do hit that bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. So from me, until next time, to you all and goodbye.